First question, we're going to dive straight into it, Grant. Let's do it. Question one, is dropshipping dead? And a part two to this that may or may not have come from the question itself, I might have added this or tweaked it. Okay. If Grant or Charlie were to start a dropshipping business uh, today, how would you approach it? All right, I so I've got to, I'll set some context before I kick this over. So uh, drop shipping for those who aren't familiar with it is when you set up an e-commerce store online and you do sell products except instead of fulfilling the orders yourself, you would have someone else fulfill them and ship them uh, direct to the customer. So why do people do this is you don't have to have a warehouse or a whole heap of stock um, is really popular. And the other one, it's very popular in like the side hustle culture because it's not something you – it's something you can do at night. Yep. It, it's a very, very interesting thing. Now, Grant, I know this for me. I'm not certain about you on this one. I actually had a drop shipping business at one point. Well, what were you drop shipping? So I was drop shipping men's hair loss products on eBay. Oh, I get out. Hang on. Like the Rogaine and stuff? I was the biggest seller of Rogaine Dude, in Australia I, at one point. I feel as though I bought Rogaine from you once. And I feel like it wasn't real Rogaine. Look, if you've got product issues, you can take it up with the supplier, <laughs> right? I don't know nothing about that. The irony being is I've lost, started losing my hair much later in oh. life and I'm like, is this the, this like, the product coming back to bite you in the ass? I had luscious thick hair at the time when I was selling it as well, which is just hilarious <laughs> Great, irony. Greatest product model ever. Huge. Have you danced in this camp? Did you? I feel like a lot of internet marketers that got online when we did, this was like a thing you did. Charlie, can you really call yourself an internet marketer unless you had a dropshipping business? Honestly. No. And if you haven't taken your laptop to the beach and gotten sanded and been like, this is a terrible idea. Why do they put that in the photos? <laughs> Taking a photo. Yeah, yeah. Then you're not really an internet marketer. Dude, totally. I did this. Did I? I know four main ones that like lasted the longest period. And I know that there were others that I brought in. And I can tell you the four sort of main ones that I had. So I had a dropshipping website for the plastics that go on the outside of motorcycles, which are called fairings. And I actually had two websites for that, by the way. Uh, I had gun safes and like gun accessories. I had uh, cots and kids things, like baby cots and stuff like that. And then I had like the big one was like dog kennels, chicken coops, et cetera. So my main question here is being you were had these businesses and I did as well, why did you get out of it? If it's such a good business grant, why did you move on? So I closed three of them. <laughs> And then sold the fourth one. Um, easy. I can answer this. So the challenge that you've got is you get squeezed. So two of them I closed because my supplier went to all of the avenues that I was selling through and just cut me out because I was just doing arbitrage. I was just buying it for 100 bucks, selling it for 120 keeping the difference until they figured out how to do SEO. And then <laughs> they squeezed me out. And I'm like, whoa, I got one trick and now I'm completely squeezed out. Uh, and then the other one I just sold out of, like we were still making margin, but the margins were getting squeezed. Revenue was slightly tanking, kind of very plateau by the end. Um, and so we just ended up selling it to a competitor who wasn't a dropshipper, who had his own warehouses and stuff. And so that's exactly why I got out. I'm like, I, I either got squeezed out or the margins got compressed. And like the only option I had was to really sell it. Like it was never going to be uh, make me a lot of money. This is only my experience and opinion. I'm not going to say this is fact, but for me, the reason I got out of it was much the same as you is that the margin got squeezed heavily. And then I found a better deal actually buying in bulk. So as that margin got squeezed, I would go, do you know what? I can buy this 30% cheaper, making numbers up, but why not? Um, if I buy it in bulk from the supplier and then I can make more revenue per, or sorry, more profit per transaction. And I feel like a lot of people got onto that as well, where it just becomes less and less unviable. And did you experience this challenge as well? As like, let's say your margin really gets under ten percent, which for a lot of people it does. Mine did. Yep. If Australia Post lose one item, you've got to sell ten to make it up. If you have to buy another item to send to the person, dude, we, we were selling chicken coops at six hundred and fifty bucks. Someone would fraudulently buy it under someone else's name, then the person's credit card they stole would do like a chargeback. I would not have a chicken coop, so I'd have to pay the supplier for like 600 bucks for the chicken coop and I'd lose the 650. And so then I'd need to sell like 10 other chicken coops to make up the difference. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this just It's hurts. brutal. Yeah. And so I, did, I had that a lot. It was, it, yeah, it was like something that I just I struggled to get through. 
much the same. I won't say this is universal, but my experience at the time was about one in fifty. I was losing. Was yeah, the we had we had factor I put in. So the the fraudulence that we had because people were buying chicken coops and then like selling them on like Gumtree, like criminals. Um, dude, there was a massive problem throughout the entire industry. The guy that bought the website like had the same problem. What a unique problem! I would not expect in chicken coops. Yeah, because they were um because they were like six hundred fifty bucks, so they bought it with someone else's credit card and then they'll throw it up on Gumtree. So for like 200 bucks, it was just a smooth move on 200 bucks. Oh, I bought this and I didn't want it. It's still a brand new in box. And it's- yeah, you wouldn't even question it, right? Nope. Ain't no one going to question that you've stolen it. <laughs> so Interesting. Yeah. So we're unpacking some of the downsides. So binary answer, is dropshipping dead? <laughs> I'd love to say no, but it should be. <laughs> it's like, but it's, it's not dead, right? Because there are still so many opportunities for people to get in. I just think that the key thing that people need to understand getting into dropshipping is that it's finite. It is, it's almost like you go into something to make a payday, but knowing that it's not going to be around for a very long period of time, right? And so it's like, cool, I have a unique advantage to sell these things for the next 12 months, 24 months before someone comes in and like compresses my margin or sweeps me out or whatever deal I've got disappears. And that's all it is. It's like a flash in the pan. Much to your point on that, I think you if you are going to be in drop shipping, you really have to be aware of like always chasing the hot product because when a new product comes, that's when there is margin. Totally. And then it kind of shrinks over time as it becomes more competitive or the supply gets into it. So I, I've seen both of those or experienced a little bit of that as well myself. Did you ever see the YouTube ad of like buying the uh, the drop shipping business of buying the wolf mug and how much the money they made? And just coincidentally, it was like when Game of Thrones was massive. <laughs> And it was like, this is how you're going to make a fortune. And I'm like, dude, get something because of Game of Thrones. Like, I guarantee you ain't selling no wolf mugs now. Uh, there's always that one guy that <laughs> he hit a trend and he thinks it's going to last forever that and he it. didn't long play it. Lightsabers when Star Wars came back, man. Like, you, I've seen it so much and I've met the business owners as well. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Hey, fellow business owner. If this topic and value-packed short video has resonated with you at all and you want to dive deeper into creating wealth inside and outside your business, check out the full episode by clicking the link on your screen or in the description right now.